an experimental successor to C++, VS Code Server, a smart new Swift UI MVCS, and the ultimate word processor for Unix geeks. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub. And this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and the coolest open source projects of the week. My shirt this week is GitHub because I am just a shill for my employer. Also, I didn't feel like doing laundry. So you can actually get your own shirt at uh, thegithubshop.com. You can also like this video and subscribe to our channel. All right, so now that all of my very much corporate mandated shilling is over, that's a joke. Let's get on to the news. Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk about um, this week was a really great blog post from Lucas Workall on the GitHub blog that offers some tips and tricks for using GitHub projects for personal productivity. And GitHub projects is currently in public beta and it's a tool for planning and tracking work on GitHub. And unsurprisingly, we use GitHub projects to do our work at GitHub. But as Lucas mentions in his post, what we found is that you can also use projects to organize your personal work too. And so Lucas's blog post, which is linked down below, um, if you're into productivity porn, I highly recommend giving GitHub projects a try. I've got a link to our documentation for getting started with projects linked down below too. All right, next up in some very cool new programming language news, there's a new one on the block and it's called Carbon and it dubs itself an experimental successor to C++. And as the project's GitHub page notes, C++ remains the dominant programming language for performance critical software, but it struggled to meet developer needs in part because of decades of technical debt. And that makes improving C++ really difficult. Now, of course, there are a lot of other new, more modern programming languages designed around high performance, notably Rust, but the design of a lot of the more modern languages makes it difficult to migrate existing C++ code bases to those new languages. And so instead, what Carbon is doing is it's taking a successor language approach rather than trying to incrementally evolve C++. And as the project page says, it's designed around interoperability with C++ as well as large scale adoption and migration for existing C++ code bases and developers. And the goal is to be able to build on top of the C++ ecosystem. So this is similar to the way that Kotlin is a successor to Java and TypeScript is in many ways a successor to JavaScript. Now, Carbon is actually from Google engineer uh, Chandler Carruth, and although it started as an internal Google project, the dev team doesn't want it to be reliant on one big company or sponsor. And so the plan is to create a foundation for Carbon, similar to the way that other open source projects like LLVM and Kubernetes run. And the project is maintained on GitHub, discussions are taking place on Discord. I've got links to all this stuff down below. Keep in mind, this is definitely experimental and the roadmap is pretty far out. Uh, the project even says that if you can use something like Rust, you should. But uh, this is a new approach to bring the C++ ecosystem forward and I think it's really cool. So links and resources are down below. Next, I want to give a mention to VS Code Server, which is now available in private preview and was announced a couple of weeks ago. And so VS Code Server is the backend service that powers the VS Code remote development extensions, as well as things like GitHub Code Spaces. And these are ways that you can use VS Code locally or in the browser to develop apps on a remote machine. So the idea is that you can install the VS Code Server and it's CLI wherever you want. So like think a local dev machine in a closet or a VM in the cloud, whatever. And then you can sec you can securely access it through a browser running VS Code for web, which is VS Code.dev, without having to bother with setting up SSH or HTTPS. I've got more details linked below. You can sign up for a private preview um, of the service. They'll begin letting people in um, soon. But in the meantime, you can read the documentation and you can watch um, a video that Burke Holland made. Happy coding. And uh, all that stuff is linked below. A lot of people have wanted this sort of solution, so I love that it's coming. Next, a shout out to the Payload CMS team for their 1.0 launch. And Payload CMS is a headless CMS that's been in, the, in public beta for like a year and a half, but now it's stable and ready for production. And it's a, Payload is a TypeScript headless CMS. You can use it for websites, web apps, e-commerce stuff. And it was really designed for developers, which is one reason I've been really interested in this project for a while. A few months back, they actually changed their license to the MIT license, so it's fully open source. And I'm really excited to play around with this as I continue my lifelong quest for the perfect CMS. Links to the project's main page and its GitHub page are down below. 
Okay, next up in shout out news, let's just keep doing it. Uh, shout out to my friend Joe, AKA Merge Sort, for launching his new project, Boutique, which is a Swift UI MVCS. So that is Model View Controller Store. And it's designed to make Swift UI a lot easier for iOS developers to build new things. And Joe has tons and tons of iOS development experience. He used to work at Twitter, and now he's doing the indie dev thing, and he's documenting his experience at his blog, build.ms. And he has a bunch of new projects and libraries, including Boutique, which is his spin on the classic MVC paradigm, but for Swift UI and with that new store component. So Ruby has Rails, PHP has Laravel, .NET has ASP.NET. I'm super excited about Boutique, and you can learn more in the links down below. And now it's time for my pick of the week. All right, for many word processing purists, the best word processor is not Word or even Google Docs, but WordPerfect. Yes, WordPerfect. WordPerfect was the preeminent word processing app of the DOS era, but it was never really able to compete with Word on Windows 3.1 or especially Windows 95. And while I think it still exists, it's mostly relegated to very pedantic lawyers who refuse to let go and move into the future. But let's stick to the past. Did you know that there was a word perfect for Unix? Please insert the, it's a Unix system, I know this, Jeff here. It's a Unix system, I know this. Look, I honestly did not know that this was a thing, but thanks to Tavis Ormandy, who's a vulnerability researcher extraordinaire, I now know that in 1992, there was in fact a version of WordPerfect for Unix. Tavis even found this classic ad that advertises options for people who quote, don't go for the GUI. Great. Anyway, Tavis uh, hacked around and he actually got this 30 year old piece of software working on modern Linux. And he's released his patches and even a .dev file onto GitHub, as well as build instructions if you wanna do it yourself. This is very, very fun. I love it. Uh, let me know your favorite word processor in the comments below and your thoughts on any of the other stories that we discussed this week. That does it for me. As always, like this video if you liked it, and even if you didn't, because it really does help us out. And please subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel for all your nerd needs. See you next time.